Hey Earthlings! Hey everybody! So why many people fail in the raw vegan diet? This video we will share with you why we find it challenging to eat raw vegans. Yeah, and <laughs> to eat raw, raw vegans. vegans. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're gonna keep this. <laughs> so we collected 10 reasons that we see other people struggle and also those are the reasons why we have struggled the most mm -hmm. to maintain this lifestyle and some of the, those reasons are actually um, the reason why we sometimes eat actually cooked food most raw vegans are not 100 percent raw all the time yeah. and that includes us most days we eat fully raw mm -hmm. but other days we eat something cooked and it's not a big deal <laughs> and we're gonna share with you what are some of the reasons why we do that mm -hmm. by far the biggest reason why we see people struggle with this lifestyle and this includes us <laughs> is suppressed emotions yes so what's suppressed emotion yeah so basically we learned to that certain emotions are not okay to show and mm -hmm. they are not okay to feel because it feels so overwhelming for us when we don't know how to deal with them yeah. so the way we are le have learned to cope with it is by eating certain foods that make us mm -hmm. numb that distract us from feeling that or just make us feel better some way however when you start eating raw, yeah. what happens is that the coping mechanism is out of the window. Yeah, your comfort <laughs> food is not there. Usually our comfort food is like chocolate, pasta. bread, pasta, heavy food that make us like, ah, yeah, and not so much connected to our emotions. Yeah, so when you go raw, all those emotions start coming up. Mm -hmm. And if you're not able to deal with them, or yeah. you don't even know how to recognize them, what's going to show up is intense cravings. Mm -hmm. You will just feel irritated, you will feel uncomfortable, it will register as discomfort and you just desperately want to eat something that yeah. makes you feel better. Mm -hmm. so, so it's kind of like choosing short-term uh, comfort above long-term solution. So it's super important uh, transitioning to a raw vegan diet if you want it to be sustainable is to learn to understand what it is that made you eat those unhealthy foods in the first place? What is your biggest, you know, emotional trigger um, that causes you to have cravings, that causes mm. you to crave certain cooked foods? And then process those emotions. And this is one of the reasons why I think it's actually not always healthy to go r raw overnight or super quickly because mm -hmm. it doesn't leave any room for us to find ways to actually nurture ourselves in different ways. Mm -hmm. Food is nurture, guys. And for most of us, it's a way that we've learned to nurture our inner children. And if we don't find another way to do that, mm -hmm. it can actually actually be abusive to ourselves. to just rip that, you know, only comfort away from us, yeah, from exactly. ourselves. This is why we see many raw vegan, they commit to it for a certain time and then they flip completely to the opposite. They swing <laughs> to the opposite direction. And actually Mia wrote an amazing article. I will link it down. It's called in the, the swing effect. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I really recommend you reading it to understand more about this emotional aspect to the raw vegan diet. Yeah, so you can go maybe like a week suppressing your emotions. Yeah. And after you're done with your one week raw challenge or whatnot, mm -hmm. people tend to flip to the opposite extreme, just like Ram said, mm -hmm. because the emotions are still there. Yeah, exactly. And we recommend you to work with emotion using different methods like um, for example, part work or um, internal family system. We already made a video about it. You can check it um, above. And we'll leave the link in the description also. Yeah. So reason number two, why this is difficult social for most pressure. Oh yeah, social pressure. Yeah. This is a big one. So especially if you are a social being like any of us, if you get invited somewhere, you will, people will ask you questions like all over the place, like, is this your food? Like, are you eating only salad? Like, wh what can I give you? And that will create a lot of pressure on you to mm. kind of like make an exceptions when you go party or when you get invited to like an event somewhere. That was like kind of challenge for us, not only because we don't want to disappoint people, but energetically to be in the same page with others. Yeah, and like for me personally, it, it was such a challenge to go visit my grandmother 
and mm. it's her love language to make food for people and she d couldn't really understand why I'm refusing everything she has in the house like the only thing she had I, I would eat was like apples <laughs> generation <laughs> yeah. conflict <laughs> yeah and of course we, we are inter uh, relational beings like we're no, none of us are islands to ourselves mm -hmm. like we are meant to thrive as a you know in a tribe and if we don't have a tribe that supports this lifestyle it can mm -hmm. be really difficult yeah. and a lot of us raw vegans we tend to gravitate away from certain people who cannot you know embrace us with this lifestyle and we start have to find new friends basically <laughs> yeah. new soul family yeah it goes with everything like if you if you're not welcome with your authentic self you can't be in the social group that you are in uh, uh, either you have to suppress your authenticity or your own decision to fit the group you need to switch and this is why we see many vegans and raw vegans moving towards community intentional community that share the same is, values this is what yeah. we are creating as well yeah okay number three very related to this one but it's not exactly the same thing mm -hmm. um when you eat a completely different kind of food than the people around you mm -hmm. you are vibrationally in a different space what that means so basically, you will feel like um, you can't almost like relate to the other people. It happened to me sometimes in my previous in our previous community where other mm. people would eat heavy cooked food. Mm -hmm. I was eating oranges. Yeah, I felt like I was be like flying. I was like in such a high vibrational state, and everybody I I couldn't relate to. I couldn't basically connect to the other people. Mm -hmm. It felt like we're in two different realities, like yeah. observing life from a through a different lens almost. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this sometimes you might, and this is a reason that is often unconscious because we are not aware that we want to be vibrational in the same page with the people around us. Yeah, so people can relate to you to it to this by like being in the same page, like belonging, like you want to be similar to others in a different way. And sh me are talking about being energetically similar to others. If you are the only raw vegan in your circles, you might actually feel lonely. Even if the people around you accept you with your diet and whatever you're doing, you might just end up feeling like you can't somehow relate to the people around you or mm -hmm. they seem to be in a different vibration. And not saying that, I kind of tend to see it like you're in a higher vibration, um, but it's not necessarily always that higher is better. That's not at yeah. all necessarily the case. It just like feels like something that lighter. brings you away from the people around you. Our environment impacts us a lot. Yeah. So when you are with people who are in a different vibration, they tend to pull you towards their vibration. And if you're not grounded in, and centered in your own, you know, um, being. being like, this is what I'm doing. Mm -hmm it's kind of like they keep pulling you towards their vibration and the same happens with your like larger environment if you live in a city or something mm -hmm. <coughs> um, and i think this is why many people in the city find it difficult to like choose to live raw vegan it's very easy if you go to the amazon like what we visit in ecuador last year or like if you live in a community like this it's very easy for us to eat raw vegan but if you live in the middle of the city with all this noise and all a this more fast movement it will be difficult for you definitely especially because on this diet you become more sensitive to everything you become more sensitive to energies mm -hmm. and when you're in a city it everything impacts you much more than before it's like before you were numbed by you know all the food that you used to eat mm -hmm. and in the raw vegan diet your system is cleansed and all the energies impact you and pull you and you know and throw you to all <laughs> directions that's how it kind of feels like uh -huh. and you get exhausted by it and then mm. you feel like eating cooked food the cravings come back and you want to pull your energy i remember once down. we were in the ecuador in the fruit having community and we just went to the city for two days to visit and we like we were eating raw vegan for like three weeks like in, in mainly fruit mainly fruit and, and then juice. we're in the city like the first time we felt like oh i want to cook food somehow yeah i remember i was feeling really low for like two days i was mm -hmm. like just like tired and like grumpy and <laughs> i was craving cooked food and then i allowed myself to eat it yeah. you know and i felt good I, it was something like soup with broccoli quinoa sweet potato mm -hmm. and i felt like like oh it felt like relief in yeah. my system it's almost like there was like a, some kind of imbalance between me and my environment. Like my, I wasn't in the same vibration mm -hmm. and um, somehow by eating cooked food, it was harmonized. I felt in harmony with my environment. And this is a big reason also why many raw vegans who are successful on this life, lifestyle move to the nature, mm -hmm. move to the tropics, out of the cities. This is our next step. Yeah. Wait for us, Ecuador. So that was number four, I think. Yeah. Um, uh, no, number four is grounding actually, and it relates to the previous topic. Mm -hmm. So, like, 
the reason why sometimes it's difficult to maintain a fully raw diet is because uh, if we are not fully rooted, um, and many of us are still blocked in our like lower chakras, we can easily be kind of like in the like uh, somewhere up here, living up here, like kind of like <laughs> spaced, you know, out. spaced out. <laughs> yeah, feeling ungrounded. So I know from myself, for example, even after like intense client sessions or something, mm -hmm. I tend to feel a bit like ungrounded and I like to eat something mm -hmm. usually still raw but a bit heavier raw like maybe like avocado or nuts or something like that and um, especially when we do plant medicines mm. and we have a video about San Pedro yeah. I often feel very ungrounded afterwards it's like I sh go into some higher dimensions and then I'm like I just feel kind of shaky mm -hmm. and I really crave cooked food and it actually feels good it feels like it brings me back to my body brings me back to mm -hmm. earth <laughs> yeah so this is a big reason why it can actually be beneficial sometimes depending also what kind of lifestyle you lead um to you know eat some healthy cooked foods mm -hmm. to help you ground it yeah for me one of the main reason why i don't eat fully raw is because i really like food guys <laughs> <laughs> and i think and i think self-love is more important than following the perfect diet in, inside me, I know, like my intuition and my mind is telling me that, yeah, going fully raw is the next step. But in order to be there, I refuse to push myself in a way that doesn't feel self-loving. So mm -hmm. self-love for me is the higher priority and integration. So if there is like an aspect of me who doesn't want to eat fully raw or want to eat this hummus or this peanuts or whatever, I, if I kind of like bulldoze this aspect of me, that doesn't feel good for the totality of me. It might feel good for my body, but then there is a part of me who's suppressed. Yeah. So, and this is what I see many raw vegans or even vegans do it. This is like my favorite point, actually. Thanks for bringing it up. Okay. <laughs> Self-love and integration yeah. is more important than having like a perfectly clean, healthy body even. Yeah. So perfectionist or self-love or choose self-love mm. oh next one guys detox symptoms this is something <laughs> that would scare you <laughs> it can be so challenging guys when you go raw vegan especially mm -hmm. if you come from a crappy lifestyle because <laughs> your body is gonna start dumping all the crap out yeah. and this can be super uncomfortable i went through losing a lot of weight then facing criticism mm. because i lost a lot of weight i looked yeah. very unhealthy I had a lot of skin issues because all the, you know, acid waste started coming through the skin. I had no mm -hmm. idea what I was doing. Don't do it like I did it. Please don't go raw overnight like I did it. Mm -hmm. It's not a wise solution. Yeah. Um, I lost hair. I'm still recovering my hair. It's still not in its full power. Do you like to share why people go in the detox phase? Yeah. So why we detox? Because the foods that we are uh, thought to eat mm -hmm. are basically accumulating toxins in the body and we eat way too much of it and way too often. The body never has a chance to cleanse itself. Mm -hmm. The intake of nutrition is equally important as is the elimination. Yeah. So, and we are kind of locked up in the elimination. So we just accumulate mm -hmm. shit in the body for, you know, decades. Yeah. And then when you eventually go raw, meaning you give the body a chance to cleanse. Relax relax. Bec because you're no longer accumulating toxins mm -hmm. and many raw foods are actually um, aiding the process of elimination because a lot of fruit is astringent it's very hydrating mm -hmm. and that's gonna basically kick you know allow your process. yeah allow your body to start eliminating things mm -hmm. and this can be super uncomfortable and actually in this phase if it gets too in intense it can be beneficial to eat some cooked food because that will slow down the process mm -hmm. something like steamed vegetables or like a quinoa or a soup yeah i i know many raw many people who try to go raw vegan and then the detox phase starts after maybe a few weeks or a month or like some of them like six months and then they get skinny and they get scared and people like even scare them more and it's like oh they blame the raw diet yeah like oh i got sick from the raw diet no it's make it's healing you mm -hmm. but it's what it comes first is a healing crisis mm -hmm. but it doesn't have to be super intense and uncomfortable if you take it easy and this is why i recommend to everybody to transition slowly yeah. if you are eating animal products go first vegan and you know like and then plant-based and then no yeah. cooked and then yeah like slowly slowly for me it took me about one year to be in that phase like i started i was already vegan for like five years and then i did um, plant paste and then i subbed oil and then i subbed um, other things i was mm -hmm. already not eating bread 
and slowly I was shifting towards raw vegan and it was like a very slow transition and the detox that I faced was only losing weight mm -hmm. and I had like uh, uh, teeth uh, to uh, teeth come like abyss abyss what is it called like when you get like something white stuff coming out of your yeah, gut, tooth gum that's it. Yeah, I had a lot of nausea, diarrhea, like I actually felt physically pretty ill uh, throughout my detox, but I, I didn't do it in a smart way, <laughs> that's why. But yeah. yeah, that's a challenge. This one is a challenge for me and many people who live in a cold weather. So if you're living in a cold weather, your body will crave something hot. It, there's nothing more comforting than eating warm soup. Mm, so yeah, luckily we don't live in the cold climate anymore, but even here in the warm weather sometimes mm -hmm. you know there are chillier days and yeah. we feel like you know eating something that is heating to the body but luckily within the raw foods there is also you know cooling foods and warming foods yeah like chili ginger everything that have like hot flavor to it it's warming for your body also more fatty foods are more warming yeah but even so it might actually feel good in your body every now and then to have a soup if you live in a cold climate and you can still you know do your detox you can still uh, live super healthy even if you have your soup every now and then or we something forget warm. to mention durian if you Ooh, haven't existed durian. durian is very heat producing yeah. it produces a nice sweat when you <laughs> eat that <laughs> i love Thank it you one. <laughs> Another topic that many people face, especially who live in a cold weather where you import your food from somewhere else, is the quality of the food you get. When we lived in Berlin, I remember we hardly found a delicious mango like the one we eat in Ecuador. Yeah, so like it was a challenge for us to find like three delicious fruits, especially in the winter time. Yeah, so if you're used to eating very complex, delicious cooked dishes and then you go into a raw food diet, mm -hmm. it can feel really, really too plain and just like boring, yeah. especially if you don't have access to high quality produce. You know, like eating, it's a completely different thing to eat tropical fruit straight from the trees. <laughs> it's divine, guys. Like <sighs> it's such an amazing experience that it, you can't compare it to eating an unripe pineapple or and something. And this is like one reason why we kind of like have a more and more growing desire to move out of the city and like be in nature like what we do here where you can grow your own food in even. the future in ecuador yeah yeah totally like the taste is a huge thing guys mm -hmm. it, because you're already giving up a lot of things that you might have an like an addiction to mm -hmm. and then if you don't have delicious things to replace those things that are satisfying mm -hmm. that's a huge challenge yeah one reason why some people find it difficult to eat fully raw is the cost if you live in a uh, cold climate usually the price of the fruit is way higher if you want to um, get all your nutrition and all your calories from fruit then you have to have a budget um, yeah. fortunately for us we living here in Tenerife we're growing many of our food and when we lived in Berlin we had like access to discounted supermarket like if you go uh, in the weekend you can have like a discount on many things and you can have um, yeah, like uh, very good deals actually. Yeah, I personally haven't found this such an issue for some reason. I think I've basically, I was willing to buy the things that were um, cheapest. So I would eat a lot of bananas when I still lived in Berlin and I was uh, working um, mm. an office job. I would like eat a lot of bananas and oranges and you know, just things that were affordable. I also ate some nuts and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, that could be an issue for some people in the beginning, especially when you're still feeling like you want to eat a variety of different kinds of things and like a mm -hmm. quantity of things. But over time it changes. For me, it has changed. Like I'm very happy eating a very simple diet nowadays. Mm -hmm. I eat similar things every day for lunch. And um, also the quantity of what I eat has like decreased a lot. Uh, my body has been able to, I feel more satisfied now with a smaller amount of food. Yeah, actually I noticed when I went after the detox phase that I can thrive in a uh, smaller amount of food because my intestines get cleansed mm. and then I can absorb more from the fruits I eat. Yeah. Challenge number nine, not knowing how to eat. So mm. most of us, we don't have really access to our intuition around food and mm -hmm. our, you know, eating is what we eat is based on habit and what someone taught us to eat yeah. and we don't really do it from a space of oh what do i feel like eating how much do i feel like eating and when you transition to a completely new kind of diet it can be difficult like you might for example mm -hmm. eat way too little calories because you just need a bigger volume and then you end up feeling really tired or weak because yeah. you're not eating enough 
Um, another thing might be eating way too much fat. Uh, that can cause some people to feel really tired. Or bloated. Bloated, like bad food combining. Like if you combine fruit with fat, for example, will give you a lot of gas, which mm -hmm. is super uncomfortable. Yeah. And you might think, no, this diet doesn't suit me, when actually it's just a matter of like mm -hmm. figuring out what, what feels good in your body, what, you know? Yeah, so basically it's a similar challenge if you switch from like meat diet to vegan diet, you will find it the same difficulty, but with reading some books or like reading some article about how to eat, that would make your life easier and help you to move on. Mia yeah. had wrote many articles how to transcend tran transcend, tran <laughs> how transcend, transcend your soul. <laughs> how to transcend cooked food. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So like I, I would say that the key is to learn to connect to your intuition around food. Start listening to what your body wants, what like from all the fruit you have in your house, what do you gravitate towards? And then eat until you feel satisfied. And don't look too much about calories. Don't pay too much atten attention to that. I made that mistake in the beginning. I was like obsessed about getting 2000 calories a day mm. and I was overeating constantly. I think for some people it might be helpful to check actually how much you are taking and then see like you're mm. um, having the, uh, enough nutrition and vitamins like it helped me a lot at the beginning mm. although I trust Mia's method with like fe eating what feels good to me yeah. but at the same time I was insecure because I had all this like background knowledge of nutrition how healthy vegan diet looks like yeah. what you should eat like omega-3 all these things the indoctrination <laughs> of I don't know. Yeah, Who? so <laughs> and of course your thought will affect your body a lot. So if you are mm -hmm. coming from a place where you trust your diet and trust that you're doing the best for your body, it would affect you like really a lot. Yeah, that's true. Uh, it takes some time to develop that kind of intuition. So it, it could be good in the beginning to either listen to other people who've done it so that you can kind of follow in their footsteps. Maybe use a chronometer or something that um, uh, helps you link track the calories. In the description. Yeah. Um, but over time, it's, I, I would recommend to try to get into the place where you can just feel what feels right to eat mm -hmm. and how much. Yeah. Yeah. And the last challenge that we want to share with you is tooth issues. <laughs> so a lot of people, when they start eating a lot of fruit, especially experience mm -hmm. a lot of, for example, sensitivity in their teeth and uh, maybe more cavities even. And um, I experienced this in the beginning as well. However, the longer I kept going with the diet, um, this has diminished and even I have healthier teeth now than in the yeah. beginning. I remember your teeth were like more yellow and now they are way more yeah. whiter than <laughs> Yeah, so like the tips that I would have for you is um, take breaks from eating, don't eat like 24-7. Mm -hmm. Intermittent fasting helps a lot because it gives your teeth the uh, break they need to recover. Mm -hmm. These are like bone guys, they recover. More, <laughs> but you know, they don't tell this to you because like dentists almost never see that happening because yeah. of the way people eat yeah. but teeth are you know like they have the ability to recover so like if you give them a break sometimes in the form of fasting um, even intermittent fasting that really helps <laughs> another thing when you eat a lot of citruses uh, rinse your mouth afterwards so yeah. that the, the acid juice doesn't stay in your uh, affecting your teeth so just like rinse your mouth afterwards and that's that will help a lot and avoid eating sticky things like dates and raisins a lot limit that to a very like a limited amount of time and then maybe like clean your teeth right afterwards so the sticky sugary thing doesn't stay coating your teeth so those are my tips and floss <laughs> floss <laughs> helps i'm obsessed with flossing <laughs> <laughs> i get it <laughs> yeah so guys i hope this video helped you if you haven't seen our uh, first video about the benefit of eating grow vegan diet check it out because we shared amazing benefit that we experienced. And if you want to see more from us about healthy lifestyle, raw veganism, healing, plant medicine, subscribe because we have more to share. Mm. And if you like the video, share it. That will help us grow our little YouTube channel. Yeah. And sending spread you more love. Yes, we're sending you so much love. Wow. <laughs> that was a lot, right? That's a lot. <laughs> but I add more. <laughs> okay. See you, See you in the video. next video. Bye bye. Mm. We decided today to share. She's not taller than me. Let's go. What's that? I don't know. It's hot. Mm.